All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Tonight, we're going to be doing something a little different. We're not going to be doing any projects, not going to be doing an unboxing or review, none of that. Tonight, all the focus is on repairing your machine or possibly upgrading your machine. And the machine in question tonight, guys, is going to be the MK2. Uh, this is my Roly Automation Leisurematic MK2. I've got the 30 watt version that's switchable down to 10. And recently I had a little connectivity issues off and on, but it finally cleared up and then suddenly nothing. It just quit working. Uh, I contacted uh, Roly Automation, talked to Leo. We did a little troubleshooting through some emails. I tried flash flashing the firmware that was unsuccessful. And rather than just keep dragging things out, Leo said it could be possibly be the board. I'm gonna send you one out. Well, from the time that I had a problem and gave up and called Leo uh, until the time I got the new board in, it was probably five or six days. So you guys that are always asking about customer service and, and, and all that, I can't say anything bad about the experience that I had with Lasermatic. I guess it would be Roly Automation uh, when it comes to dealing with the MK2. Now, during this process, I have discovered that some of you guys may be looking to upgrade uh, the controller in the machine to some of the newer firmware uh, capable boards. I didn't know this was a thing. After the video, I recorded the video of me processing mine and changing my board out. Uh, emailed Leo and was like, hey, this was not that bad of a process for somebody who works on lasers a lot, but I think it might be a helpful video. And he agreed, uh, even to the point to where I found out that there's a new version board that's coming out that a lot of you guys may be interested in. According to Leo, the new version 1.3, which is what I installed in my machine, uh, does a little better job with the uh, rotary as far as the lines that you can sometimes get on tumblers. And apparently that's a performance enhancement that some folks are wanting. So this video may be for you, not because your machine's broken, but because you wanna upgrade it. So stick around, I'm gonna go through some of the things to look for, how to check whether or not you may be interested in the upgrade and uh, show you the process in which, how I did it. So we'll be right back. So for you guys that are doing this because your machine has an issue, this isn't something you're gonna care about. But for those of you who have got your attention because you know now that there's an upgrade for the machine, I wanna show you how to go about getting the version number off of your control board. This is the control board that shipped in my machine. And as you can see right here, uh, it has the version number stamped on the top of the, uh, the board. Uh, this one is the uh, version 1.2. The one that I installed in my machine and replaced this one with is version 1.3. And in order to keep from taking your machine apart to be able to see this number, if you're facing the machine, just behind the power button is where the control board is gonna be situated. You can either lean over and try to look in there with a flashlight and do it that way, use a mirror if you're good at reading backwards, or you can put your camera on selfie mode, use a flashlight, locate it with your, with your phone and take a picture that way in selfie mode. That gives you the opportunity to be able to see what it's seeing before you snap the picture. So those are your three options. Or of course you could take it out and look at it. I would not recommend that option because in the event that you damage something, now you do have to replace the board. But those were a couple of things I wanted to point out before we move on. The video that you're gonna watch was recorded a couple of days ago. So you're gonna see a bit of a wardrobe change, but I hope the video was helpful to you guys. Uh, if you're interested in the upgrade or if you're having problems and find this video helpful, by all means, drop a comment down below and let me know. These type of videos aren't something I do a lot of, but when I feel as though there may be a need or it may be beneficial to you guys, I like to try to record my experiences and share them with you. But keep in mind, I am not Roly certified <laughs> authorized agent to work on these things. I do have experience in IT. I do have experience with CB radios years and years ago. I've tore more than my fair share of laptops apart and put them back together. So I think that qualifies me to do it, but the way I do it is not always the correct way. But hope you enjoy the video and uh, catch you guys later. All right guys, before we start, little waiver for you. Static electricity is the killer of electronics. So before you do this, Try to ground yourself out, get all the static out off of your person. 
All right, if you're wearing clothes that are prone to uh, creating static electricity, get out of those. Put something on that's not gonna create static. Uh, I, I would pr recommend that you not do this on a carpeted area. Make sure that, uh, you know, that way if you move and you drag your feet, you build a charge, you touch something, it's done. So those are some precautions that you need to take. Ordinarily, uh, I would recommend that I have a, a little bracelet basically that goes around my wrist. I have a mat and then it's got a little cable that goes, connects the two. Those are the type of things that you would want to use in a real world, but let's face it guys, most folks aren't going to have that. So just make sure to touch stuff that is grounded and make sure that you don't have any static electricity before handling any of these parts or attempting any of this work. Same goes for computers, cell phones, tablets, anything electronic, static electricity is not their friend. So let's, uh, let's move over to the machine and I'm gonna kind of try to do most of the video with the glasses so that you guys can kind of see what I'm seeing. The intent of the video is to make you feel a little more comfortable about being able to perform this job and show you those tips and tricks that I use. So let's get started. Here we are, I've got the honeycomb removed from the machine because you are gonna wanna remove it. The board is located right here inside the front chassis. Uh, now, make sure you've got all your power disconnected, USB, everything. You don't want any wires connected to this machine during this process. I'm also going to take my SD card out just so they didn't catch and damage anything there as well as uh, so I don't lose that guy. And so I've never taken one of these out. Uh, I've worked on a lot of lasers, so I don't think it's too challenging. But one thing that you need to pay attention to, especially with the Roly, look at where all your connections are on the old board. Uh, it's not a bad idea. I've already done this, but take a photo of where those connections are and how everything connects so that you'll know going back with it uh, because there are possibly going to be some ports that you're not going to be using. So we've got a wire here, 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 and then down through there. So that's pretty simple, pretty easy. We just got to get this thing out from back here, get all the wires unplugged, and we'll be good to go. All right, this operation looks fairly simple, uh, assuming there's no nuts on the back side of this. We've got two screws and the antenna itself. I'm gonna go ahead and get that antenna to try to get it to come loose. Uh, it's a little snug, so kind of hard to get my fingers on it. So I'm gonna use my little pair of pliers there just to get it started coming off. Uh, okay, maybe I'm gonna use the pliers more. Uh, the base is actually seems to be turning as well. So I'm gonna have to get more than just one set of tools here. So I kind of cheated a little bit. I reached down here and grabbed the bottom of this uh, little mount. And now I'm able to actually turn it with this wrench that I just happen to have in my laser box. So you don't want to twist that and, and break anything inside here. So we've got that loose and uh, that base just kind of sits down in that little stand right there. Uh, so we should be good to go. It does have a washer it appears, but we'll, we'll get that off in a second. We'll just get it loose from the chassis to start with and then we'll go from there. So taking a second screw out to free that up. Okay, upon further investigation, I discovered that this is actually like a little nut. <clears throat> so you're gonna have to take your pliers and just kind of unscrew it. And once you get it up above, get all, get all the pressure off of it, you can, you can turn it with your fingers and remove that completely. So I got that off. Yes, and there's a cat. Uh, and this should slide right off. Don't lose the washer. So going back, we're just going to have to push the antenna up through there, put the nut on, or the washer on, and then that little flat nut, turn it on there to get it tight, and then screw the top nut on. So that is loose. But the bad news is, guys, it looks like I'm going to have to take the antenna loose anyway <laughs> because the hole is not big enough for me to get this part through. So too bad. I was hoping I wouldn't have to take that off. But that's going to actually have to come loose from the board to fit that back through the hole. So I probably could have avoided taking the antenna off and just used this one. Hindsight. All right, so now the trick is going to be to get all of these uh, little screws here loose from the board. Uh, as well as getting the plugs released. I'm hoping that these are the same size. They may be smaller. No. Nope. Two millimeter screws here. So I've got one in the back. Go ahead and get that guy out. Got another one right below it. I'm hoping not to have to take this synchronization bar out that goes from side to side here. I'm, I'm kind of hoping I can work around it. Worst case, uh, we may have to take that bar out to get it out of the way. Uh, so far, the screws are the same length. Nothing to keep track of there. Uh, I'm only seeing those two, but I know there's going to be more. Oh, there's two more back here. These are going to be a little bit of a booger to get to. Uh, so 
Good luck with those. <laughs> but here we go. All right, so I got all the screws loose that I can find. Uh, as far as I can tell, everything is loose. Uh, but getting these wires is going to be the next uh, next step. Uh, so the one thing that I will say is be careful uh, not to damage any of the plugs. Yes, this bar is really, really kind of in the way. So I think that may be, that definitely may be something I might have to do. Because I don't know that I can get that out from in there without it. All right, guys. So on this linkage, I'm going to go ahead and take it out just to make sure. You're going to have to loosen these two screws. They've left enough of a shoulder here to slide this linkage over until it bottoms out here. And that will allow this to disconnect from the stepper. And then once you do that, you can just kind of lean it forward. It's going to allow some tension to come off of that belt. And just pull it out of the uh, hole that it sits in. And I'm going to try to just keep everything together. And just lay it up here away from my work area. Make sure you don't get this belt twisted going back together. And also make sure to get this connected properly. But we'll go over that when we get back to that step. Alright, as you can see, i got a lot more area to room to work here now. Uh, these zip ties are kind of holding this thing still. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one zip tie here loose to give me a little room. Uh, to be able to manipulate this board uh, I'll put that back on there when we go back together with it But that's going to make it a little easier for me to, to to manipulate this plug without damaging anything So I'm just going to squeeze that plug and just kind of rock it a little bit uh, This thing's never been taken apart. So it's probably going to be a little snug And you've got other cables too that's got to come loose So just try to remember where everything goes just, just being a little tight. So let me go ahead and pull this uh this first pin here. I'm going to go ahead and pull that one out so I don't damage anything if this thing finally goes because it's been a little tough. So there we go. Got that guy loose. So what we've got so far, we've got this pin, the two white ones will be connected. Uh, so it looks like down here it's just going to be the white pins all the way across. All right, guys, like I said, take yourself some photos so that you, if you do get confused, you'll know where everything goes back. So I've got me a photo. Uh, the next wire that's kind of holding it is going to be this one here that goes to the main power. Uh, this is a little tricky getting in here to this thing without totally disassembling this machine. Uh, it is probably going to require you have some, some little pliers to help pull with. Uh, yeah. I may wait and get that one in a minute. It appears that that just goes to the power wire, the power switch there. Uh, the Wi-Fi antenna, I should be able to just knock that little guy off. Let me get those uh, screws out of there. Alright, so I've got this larger wire going right, to the so back. Now I'm going to try to tackle this, uh, this big wire here. It's kind of in a, in a predicament with this board being loose, but I kind of needed it loose to be able to get to it. So I'm just going to kind of pull up on the, on the lip there, get it moved just enough to where it'll get past it, and then get that guy loose. There we go. So that's loose. Now we've got this little tiny wire behind it here. Uh, wow. I would have really liked a few more inches of cabling on some of this stuff, maybe. Uh, but I'm going to try to get this one just with the pliers. Gently wiggle that out of there. So I've got those two out. And uh, yeah, this is this is very much like working on a laptop, guys. All right, so now i got to get these guys. All right, so we've got the larger uh, wire going to the back. And then you've got, remember the order of these. The white one, then I've got the black one, then I got the red one. So there we go. And other than the Wi-Fi antenna, we're freed now. So I'm gonna have to get that little guy loose. I hate those little connectors, by the way. I think I've already mentioned that once. There we go. So that little guy right there is going to be a pain to put back together. <laughs> I hate those. All right, so here's the replacement board, guys. And uh, 
It's uh, it's the same. Ex this is a version three. You can see right there because it says version three. This is a version two. So this this may have been an older run of board that they changed out, and who knows? Maybe they had a few bad ones. Who knows? But anyway, uh, we're gonna go be going back with the version three. This is uh, like I said, version one point two on that one, version one point three on this one. Other than that, they're identical. So let's get her back together. Just for good measure, I popped off the antenna off the new board, and I'm taking the old one out. Keep it with that board just in case. And then we'll, uh, when we get everything else back in, we'll just drop that in there, connect everything, and then come back with it. But for right now, I'm going to lay it to the side, uh, because it'll just be kind of dangling in the way. We've got to get this put back in first. So going right back in the way it came out, just making sure my cabling stays out of the way. Uh, you do got this one little small cable coming from probably one of the, the switches up here. Uh, that's going to kind of have to be held back while these others have to be thread th through this opening in the board. And if you've got larger hands, guys, save yourself from crying and get you a set of needle nose for this job. So once I get that lined back up, uh, we should be pretty good. I got a little plug trying to be a problem there so this is right, something so i got my my ports are lined up looking in here i've got all my cabling and everything outside not underneath the board uh the board's sitting in there nice and smooth so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and put one of the one or two of the screws back in the board to kind of hold it steady while i put these uh these plugs back together uh, i just think that's a i think that's a good idea uh, instead of this thing trying to wiggle around to uh, to do that so get this in here and just kind of snug these this first screw I'm just going to kind of snug it down a little bit and uh, that way I can kind of manipulate this board without it moving to make sure uh, my memory is correct guys refer to drawing or my picture I got to go red first then black then white on the connections to the board so we're going to work this kind of reverse uh, from that end. I want to put this big wire first. All right. The next one beside the big wire, as you can see here, is going to be the white insulator. So I'm going to take the white one and put it in next. But get this black wire out of the way. So I'm going to take this white one. And just get it in there next shouldn't take a lot of force to get these going once they're lined up correctly so be, be gentle there we go uh, next up is going to be the black one and then red And once I get it sitting into the plug, all I'm using the pliers for is just to kind of give it a little push from the back side. You're going to want to make sure all those are pushed in there. Be careful not to, to be too rowdy with these wires where they go into those connectors. Could result in an issue if you don't. Uh, so now we've got to get these power wires right here plugged back. So this one goes into that little port right there. And it's kind of a bad angle. Let me get the wire twisted around where I can kind of grip the back of that little guy. There we go. Give it a little All right, so got both the power wires in there now. Uh, so the only thing next left next is this larger cable here. Uh, this is the one that came off kind of tight, so it's probably going to require a little more force to go back in, I would imagine. Uh, make sure it seats really good. And I'm probably going to connect it and power it up before I put everything back together, just to make sure that it this does, in fact, fix the problem I was having. So there we go. Uh, other than the Wi-Fi antenna, we're good. For this little guy, it's hard to see it, but that's actually just like a little snap ring inside there uh, that has to be lined up here, which is going to be a challenge. Uh, always is for me. Uh, 
unfortunately. Uh, I've never had good luck with these things. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this part together before we get it in there so we've got a little bit more room to work. All right, so I've got the plastic insert. This is just basically to raise it up and get that fitting above the surface of the ma machine. Uh, I'm gonna take and drop this little washer in there and then we're gonna take this little uh, holder well, if I can hang on to it, it's very small. Little holder slash nut here. And I'm just gonna kind of thread that on there to hold everything in place. Once I get that snug down, that is basically just gonna hold that long enough to get this on there and get it secured to it. So once you, once you put this on there, just kind of hold this base part right here, which I'm gonna need pliers for and just snug that down with my hand. Now that's put back together. So now I've got to insert it and connect it. All right, dropping the uh, connector down through the hole. I will be needing my needle nose for this. Uh, get that wire over here to where it connects. There may be some wire training that needs to be done, which is where you kind of like bend the wire into the direction that you want to snap it because these things like I said they're not fun to play with and you've got to get it perfectly lined up with that base section there and I'm gonna need a light so you've got to get it perfectly lined up with that little base with the little brass connector right there uh, and once you get it lined up it should just press right in there we go that was surprisingly easy for what I usually deal with with laptops at work. So I kind of want that cord to, to move, but I think I'm just going to leave that be. It's not, it's not going to hurt anything. Not a lot of moving parts here. So yeah, I think we're just going to leave that alone. <laughs> I'd rather it be under it, but I'm not sure I have enough slack. All right, so now I'm going to go back with all the screws because some of these uh, some of these screws actually serve as a board ground through those traces right there into the chassis. And just as a precaution to make sure that uh, everything's grounded properly, I'm going to go ahead and run all the screws in on this. I'm not going to put the bar back in until I make sure everything works. But if this doesn't work, guys, to be honest with you, I'm going to just be down for a while. Because <laughs> if it's not the board, I don't know what else it could be. And apparently neither does Leo. So uh, we're gonna go back with the screws. Magnetized screwdrivers, guys, if you don't have them, uh, you can buy these little magnetizers that work really well because having a magnetized screwdriver is a lifesaver. So get that guy put back in. Just snugging it down. You don't want to crank down too tight. You do want it tight enough to make contact with that little ground strip on the board though. All right, so on this guy right here, you can see there's a wire trying to get in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this screw started a little bit. And what I wanna do is take my needle nose and I'm gonna just kind of move that wire out from behind and underneath it and get it over here out of the way, just to make sure I don't pinch that wire. Uh, if you tighten one of these screws down on the wire and pinch it and ground it to that part of the board underneath, you could cause some bad stuff. So all that's back together. Cable management looks pretty good. We do need to put a zip tie there before we really wrap things up, but we're going to hold off for now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this screws in for the antenna. Uh, using this little plastic bracket, it doesn't need a ground, obviously, or the bracket would not be plastic or would have a ground strap. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put those back in it just to, because I'm actually kind of confident that this is going to fix it, to be honest. Uh, so... I just don't want to button it all the way up and jinx myself. All right, scared me for a minute, guys. I had this big gaping hole. I forgot to stick out the shaft out. Uh, taking the SD card. I'm going to go ahead and put this SD card back in it. That's the one that came from the machine before. Uh, shouldn't be anything we need. I just like keeping an SD card in there. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, get USB power connected. And then we're going to power this guy up and see what happens.
Should be good. In order to put this back, the linkage back, and make sure that everything's accurate, the way that I decided to do it was using the, the, the limit pins here. Uh, I pulled the gantry all the way to the front of the machine until both sides are resting on those pins. And I'm aligned this so that you can see where the two rods come together. You want to make sure you have enough of the rod on both sides that it makes contact with this nut. Uh, and you can test that and make sure it's tight by you know just trying to twist them in opposite directions. But once I got the rod back in there, got it secured, tightened it down really good. Uh, the screws actually turned them so they face here so it's a little easier if I ever had to do it again. So now we're, we're good to go. We've got that back together. And then we're simply going to set the honeycomb back over inside. All right, so I've got the machine back together, guys. Powered the machine up. Uh, go over to light burn, and you'll see that the machine has connected. I was having a problem with it not connected uh, before, so obviously the new board is working, so we're going to home it and see what happens. And there you go. So before I wrap it up, I do want to make sure it actually burns before I get it off my workbench table, just to make sure all my connections are good. All right, so all I'm going to do is just make a quick little shape right here. And I'm going to set that to a line. Uh, not really worried about the cuts and power. I am going to run it up to 100% power just so I can see it. And I'm just going to send this out to the machine. All right. And let's make sure it burns. All right, guys. So we're back in business. I'm going to break everything down off the work table and get the Rolly MK2 back where it belongs. All right, guys. It was a success. Uh, I want to say, first of all, thanks to uh, Leo over at Rolly Automation because it, it made it very simple. Reaching out to Leo, getting the parts shipped. It was less than a week from the time I had a problem. Uh, emailed Leo next night. I kind of worked on some troubleshooting that he told me to do. Sent back the results. And uh, he agreed that he believed that maybe the board had went bad or you know something had happened to the board. So uh, we wound up. He advised me he was gonna ship me the board. I got the board, two day delivery through FedEx. It arrived today and we got it put in and everything is working like it's supposed to and I'm back to doing cutting boards. So I hope the video helps guys. Uh, I reached out to, to Leo to see if maybe he thought this video would be something to be helpful uh, for the Rolly community in the event that this happens. Mine may be an isolated incident. It could have been something environmental here. I have no way of knowing. Uh, the machine has not given me any problems and, until it did. So <laughs> hopefully this will resolve my issues, but if it does have any more problems, I feel confident that uh, Leo and the folks over at Rolly Automation will be easy to work with and help me get back up and going. So I hope this helps, guys. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below. And if you have any more questions, comments, concerns about the machine, feel free to uh, hit me up on Facebook. It's easiest just to message me on Facebook, but you can also email me through my website. So uh, links to those should be down below. So you should be able to find them. So till next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.